One of the most competitive and closest finishes in championship history, a rise to fame that nobody thought was possible. Two collegiate sprinters looking to spoil the party for the world's greatest, in a world-leading performance that shook the very foundation of the women's 400 meters. Now, we knew that this year's United States Track and Field National Championships would be very entertaining, but without fail, these athletes have outdone themselves once again. Because this has been one of the most interesting and high-performing meets of the season. And it's only beginning, because this is but a stepping stone to the absolute biggest meeting of the season. On July 6th, the National Championships for Athletics began in Eugene, Oregon in Hayward Field. And after months and months of waiting, we have finally seen some true greatness take place. In the men's 100, we saw a big upset as Cravant Charleston took down both Christian Coleman and Noah Lyles. In the women's 400 meters, we saw Sydney McLaughlin Lavroni absolutely destroy her competition with a time of 48.74, a time that now places her at number 10 all time, and she's now only 0.04 seconds away from the American record of Sonia Richards Ross. Lastly, we are seeing a meteoric rise from the hurdler and multi event athlete Cordell Tinch who comes from the D2 division of the NCAA, as he has now finished fifth in the long jump with a jump of eight meters. However, he is also killing it over the 110 hurdles, challenging Grant Holloway, the reigning world champion, as they both finished with a time of 13.07 seconds over the opening rounds in this year's national championships. At this point in the competition, we've witnessed some big time performances from the world's greatest athletes. But one of the more compelling moments has been the sprinting exploits from Shakari Richardson in the 100, as she ran three incredible times en route to this year's national championships. But as you can see, her finishing times actually got slower and slower en route to her first place performance. And that's because her start for the 100 meter finals was way slower than what she was expecting. And the fact that she still ran a 10.82 showcases something pretty amazing. Here's the 10 meter interval splits for the first round from Shakari Richardson, and here's the second round, and finally here's the third race that she ran in this year's national championships. For her first performance, we actually originally didn't have any 10 meter intervals, but thankfully they have now been posted, and some of the more notable splits that we'll fully explain in just a few moments is the 10 meter split at 2.11, the 60 meter split at 7.07, and of course there's the finish at 10.71. Now for her second race, she again ran a decent opening 10 meters at 2.26, another solid 60 at 7.16 seconds, and a semifinals close of 10.75. However, when we take a look at the finals, this is a drastically different race, and let's just say she fell quite short on her start. At 10 meters, she achieved a time of 2.36 seconds, which compared to everyone else in this field, actually put her in dead last. Now, this is a big problem because a start like this could potentially lead to a disaster, and no matter how much you're favored as the victor, you might not even be able to qualify into Worlds with a top 3 finish. This was certainly a big problem at the start. However, with each passing 10 meter interval, she only got closer and closer to the front, and by the 60 meter mark, she was all the way up to third place with a time of 7.16, and with the final 40 meter close of 3.66 seconds, she pulled out a huge come from behind victory to finish in 10.82. Now, in addition to actually closing on the competition, this was a big redemption race for Richardson, as it really puts into perspective how far she has come over the previous two seasons. But given her actual start in this race, it is actually insane that she was able to run a time of 10.82, because this kind of opening 10 meters almost makes it impossible to break the 11 second barrier. However, Richardson is light years away from the average athlete on the track, and when we take a closer look at how she ran this close, the numbers just might leave you speechless. If Shakari had achieved her typical start from the first race and finished with the same speed that she ran in this final, she would have achieved a time, are you ready for this? Are you actually ready? Of 10.57 seconds, for her first race, her opening 10 meters was reached in 2.11, and for the finals, she was a full quarter of a second slower at 2.36. This means that with the same start and all else being equal, she would have run a quarter of a second faster in the finals, which would have placed her with a time of exactly 10.57. 
Now, this is quite the coincidental finishing time, because as many of you might remember, Shikari actually did achieve a time of exactly 10.57 in this year's Miramar Invitational all the way back for her season opener. But this race was achieved with a very strong tailwind, but it still was a very impressive performance. And given her clothes here, and her poise to stay focused and relaxed, and still come back, I think she might be close to 10.6 to 10.65 seconds fitness right now, even under legal conditions. Now, I do want to address the reality that these split times do come with minimal error margins. On the USATF results website, which we'll make sure to link down below, there's a few spots that clearly showcase splits that are slightly off. But for the most part, these times do seem pretty accurate, so take them with a grain of salt, and you can also take a closer look if you want to. Now, the prospect of Richardson running under 10.7 is very real at the moment, and she will almost certainly need this kind of speed if she's looking to challenge the new world leader in the 100, Sharika Jackson, who ran a time of 10.65 in the Jamaican Nationals. However, despite her 100-meter domination on the United States scene, she actually did something equally as impressive over in the 200 meters, as she achieved a time of 21.61 seconds. Now, like many of her other performances this year, this time was again achieved with a slightly illegal tailwind at positive 2.6 meters per second. But regardless, this 200 meter dash was a significant improvement on her recent times. Through the opening 100 meters of this race, she split a time of 11.17, which is a very solid showing for the opening 100. But for her final 100 meter split, she ran a time of 10.45 seconds, which is actually one of the fastest final closing 100s in women's 200 meter history. Now, last season, we saw Sharika Jackson crush the competition to win the World Championships at 21.45. And for this race, her second half was achieved in 10.41. Now, getting under the 11 second barrier for the second half is already difficult enough, but running under 10.5 is very elite territory. This kind of sprinting strength is quite rare, and it places both Jackson and Richardson as quite possibly the top two fastest 200 and 100 meter athletes in the world right now. And the real exciting prospect from the previous few days is the fact that these two are likely to clash in the world championships, but they might be clashing in both a 100 and the 200 meter dash. Now, I think that Sharika Jackson is almost unbeatable over the 200. She has been so consistent and so strong over the previous few years, and given her recent 10.65 performance, she might be set to attack the world record, which has stood since 1988 at 21.34. However, the 100 meter dash is possibly Richardson's best opportunity to challenge Sharika Jackson. Again, she ran a very solid opening two rounds, and even though she did falter quite significantly over the opening stages, she still ran a fast time. Obviously, I am very excited about what's been going on in the sprinting scene this season. And with so many great performances going down, I would love to hear from all of you. What do you think is going to happen in this year's World Championships from Sharika Jackson and Shakari Richardson? And also, what times do you expect to see over the next few weeks from both of these athletes? Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, until next time.